Welcome to our broadcast. We are thrilled that we have the opportunity to come into your life today. And I hope today that God speaks to you, is everything that you need for Him as our time together. Enjoy. If you have a copy of God's Word, we invite you to 1 Peter chapter 4 is where we'll be today. Verse number 7, 1 Peter chapter 4, we're reading out of the Christian Standard Bible. The end of all things is near. You believe that? Therefore, be alert and sober-minded for prayer. Above all, maintain constant love for one another. How about that? Above all, maintain constant love for one another since love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Just as each one has received a gift or a talent or a calling, use it to serve others. As good stewards of the varied grace of God, if anyone speaks, let it be as one who speaks God's words. If anyone serves, let it be from the strength God provides so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything. To Him be glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray together. We thank you, Lord. Simply, my words would be yours. My thoughts would be yours. And all of us here today, what we hear, would walk in obedience. God will give you praise and glory for what you do in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. You may be seated. When I think about this sermon, we've, been, we've told you that we're going to do time, talent, and treasure. And, and today's about talent. And we came up with this thought is that it's, it's, it's about talent go, not talent show. The world that we live in, it's amazing to me how we are just captured by talent. We want to see it. The last few years, it's amazing. I did a little research and found out that in just in the last 10 to 12, 15 years or so, there have been over 40 programs that have been put on national TV, reality shows that have to do with talent. Some of the ones that are out there now is American Idol. I guess the very thought of American Idol, I think of Carrie Underwood, <laughs> just do. That's how she was found. I think about The Voice. I've not watched that much. Some of you do. I've watched a lot more of America's Got Talent on the reruns on Facebook than I ever did live. But it's amazing the amount of talent that you see people have. The X Factor and Dancing with the Stars. I just named a few that are going on right now. But you know, I started thinking about this and it made me go back in memory just in, li in my lifetime and things about it. And You know, I, I want y'all to know that, uh, yes, I heard it's 80 something. Now it's up to 90 something that were here yesterday for a teenager's event. Isn't that something? A Valentine's event, almost 100 people were in the fellowship hall. Brothers four were here in a concert. What a phenomenal day. See, I was thinking about coming, but I'm not old enough yet to be in teenagers because the age is 55, right? Well, I want to announce to you I'm still 54, okay? But in six more months, I expect I'm going to get a certificate. I'm going to officially join the teenagers. And uh, think about it along those lines. It's amazing. So it, but my, in my age, I started thinking about talent shows. I grew up, probably would have gotten in trouble with my mama. She'd have known it. But I was watching uh, Showtime at the Apollo. Do you all remember that? Blake told me it's still around. That means Blake's watching it. But anyway, that's another story. So I, I didn't know it was still around. Showtime at the Apollo. And, and if it was a bad act, they had a guy that came out with a chair and a whip sometimes run them off. You remember? I mean, I loved it. Some of you, y'all sinned just like I did. Anyway, but I also loved another one. It goes way back to the 70s. I was just a little bitty thing then. It's the Gong Show. Y'all remember the Gong Show? I mean, it's on YouTube. You can look at it and you'll think, they actually, people would pay to watch. It's unbelievable. I mean, there was no graphics. I mean, it's terrible. It's yellow. The screen was yellow. It's amazing how we ever saw things. It's amazing what HD has done for us. But the Gong Show. The guys would come out and inevitably they'd have some terrible acts and everybody there, including us on watching TV, just gong them. I told Bo, I said, you know, thought about it too late, but I would have had to love a big gong up here. Had some good time today. But the gong show, why do I share that with you? Because man, I guess it's our fallen nature. I, this is going to sound like I'm off on talent, but, but it sounds like, what, what is the big deal with talent? And I think sometimes we're guilty, maybe a lot of the times, is we want everybody else to experience how good we are. And all of a sudden it becomes about me, and it's a talent show, and the abilities I have instead of a talent go. And what I mean by that is God created us, He's the one that gave it to us, and He gave us what He's given us for us to bring glory and honor to Him. God has a lot to say about talent. I mean, it's amazing to me how fast and 
You know, Georgia had a great recruiting class. The fastest guys in the country are now at the University of Georgia. Play football. Uh, sounded good anyway. Go Tigers. Anyway, but it's, it's, it's amazing when I just see raw ability as a talent. We have one in our church. Albert Smathers is amazing to me that you can take a blank canvas and some colors, and before long you look at it and go, how in the world? I can't draw. If I smell bad, I can draw flies. That's about it. Most of my taste is in my mouth. But then you take a writer. We have some in our church. We have some people on Facebook. It's amazing. They can start telling a story. And I just love when it comes across my thing on Facebook and they've written something. Alan Carter's one of them. He was at the 830 service this morning. And I just love reading what he writes. It's amazing, his perspective and, and just putting it with words. My mother has that ability. But writers that take words and they can just bring to light a, a, a truly a, an event of life. And then you have orators many that I could name through my lifetime, when they tell a story, they literally, you see, when they're telling the story, you see what they are saying. <laughs> see, the church is not an exception when it comes to talent. Let me read a passage to you found in Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 8. It says this, For by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he should think. Instead, think sensibly as God has distributed a measure of faith to each one. Now, as we have many parts in one body, and all the parts do not have the same function, in the same way, we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. According to the grace given to us, we have different gifts. If prophecy, use it according to the proportion of one's faith. If service, use it in service. If teaching, in teaching. If exhorting, in exhortation. Giving, in generosity. Leading with diligence. Showing mercy with all cheerfulness. What are we saying is that God's always been about talent. And I think today, just in a simple way, I want to answer for us some thoughts about talent. Just some simple questions. It can really be simple. The first one is this, when? There's your question. When did this all happen? When did this person have this talent? And when did this person have this ability? And when did this person have this gifting or that calling? And there's really two thoughts. One is God's creator God, amen? You know, we didn't just get here. God is orchestrated. He's in control. He's creator. All right, the Creator created us. And so when we were created, when we were conceived, and, and we became a living being, God imparted to us physical traits, personality traits, abilities that He gave us just because we're human beings. And we're all different. I read a lot of stuff this week. I almost didn't put it in the sermon, but I thought I'd get way out there and won't get home. Is there's people that gloat over when they're celebrated over their talent, and then there are people that are depressed that don't have much. God didn't guarantee on what level, you know, but God gave to different ones proportionally. It says that in Romans. I just read it to you. But God takes all of us and our different levels and our different abilities and talents, and he puts us all together, and we become the body of Christ, the family of God. Pretty good stuff. But see, if we, if we reject Christ, I should back up a little bit and say, we're just, in, we're just humanity. Even before salvation, we still have these abilities or talents that God's given us. But the second thought is this, and they go together. They're not against each other. But when someone accepts Christ, it says Paul wrote in Ephesians that when we come to know Christ in Ephesians 2, it says that Jesus imparted spiritual gifts to us. And it's a great, it's a great statement. It's a great set of verses there to read. And there's several places that we have spiritual gifts that are defined. 1 Corinthians 12 they are. And we also have Romans and Ephesians as well. It shows us that there are spiritual gifts that God gives us upon salvation that makes us unique within the body of Christ. And see, we can never just say, it was like me showing that a while ago. So many times we think the ministry is just right here. Like we think it's up here. But there's so much ministry out there. I can show you that someone that comes in the next few months to our church, they will have already made up their mind before they ever get in here and hear the preaching or hear the, see, experience the worship of Lakeshore. We have a responsibility to be Jesus Christ regardless of the stage that we have. I'll share that with you another time or two today. And so within the scheme of things in our life, we need to realize that God both in, in creating us as a human being, but also imparting and impacting our life spiritually, God in His totality has given us what we need to be, or given us enough so that we can fulfill what we're supposed to be in Him. So we think along those lines. So that's the, you know, wait a second now, that's, that's when, that's when it happens in those two arenas. Let me give you a verse, Ephesians 2, chapter 10. I mean, excuse me, Ephesians 2, verse 10, it says this, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us. 
for us to walk that way. Listen to me. Remember, some weeks ago we preached along those lines that God puts us up on His wheel. He puts us up on His work table. We're His workmanship. He's working on us. God's impacted our life for us to be what we're supposed to be. Use the talent. And it's not a talent show, it's a talent go. So we got the when, what about the how? Now think about the, this next question. How does, how does it all happen? Well, let me tell you, and I've already jumped all around it, but it's not a mole or a cookie cutter or one way. They're all different. We're all different. It's amazing just thinking right off the top of my head. It didn't take me long to do this. Moses was a stutterer. He's fixing to go and meet the most powerful man in the world at that time. And he says, I can't even talk. I, my speech, I'm slow of speech. I slur. I can't, can't even make a sentence. David was a runt. The greatest king. If anybody talks about the lineage of Jesus Christ, King David's always in it. And yet he was a runt. You don't know the story when the, the prophet came and God had told him, said, you're going to anoint the next king from the house of Jesse. He goes to the house and says, I want to see all your boys. I'm fixing to anoint the next king. His own daddy didn't even think he was quality stuff. Pretty bad day, isn't it? Might have some people on the sound of my voice. Mom and dad didn't speak too much into your life. Well, I've got great news to you that God will go beyond what mom and dad ever do. Amen? I love the thought. There's a song somebody wrote about it. It's a phenomenal thought. When they finally went and got David. He said, you got any more, got any more boys? He said, yeah, I got one down there tending the sheep. He said, get him here. When he walked in, and anointed him the next king of Israel. Isn't it amazing? And the song goes this way. When others see a shepherd boy, God might see a king. Not much. Been reading through the, the Old Testament. Elijah, they said he was a hairy man. I told it this way. I, I believe... He had so much hair. If he was wearing a, a shirt and tie like I am, he had hair coming out of his back of his neck too, okay? Elijah was a hairy man. John the Baptist, he was eating locusts, dipping them in honey. I bet he was something to look at. <laughs> you got Elisha. This makes me feel better. Elijah was a bald-headed man. There's hope for some of us. Huh? You remember the story, don't you? They, he came out and some boys started calling him baldy, baldy, baldy. To the prophet of God. Y'all don't mess with God's anointing, but I, that's another sermon series. It says that two she-bears, I don't know where the he-bears were, but two she-bears came out of the woods and killed 42 of them. Mauled them to death. He was bald-headed. <laughs> on and on we could go of people that don't fit the criteria, they don't fit the qualifications that man might come up with. But I want to remind you that God takes all of us and all of our differences and all of our inadequacies and all of our little quirkiness and he puts us together. He puts us together as a team. And it's not a team with a bunch of tentacles. It's a team that's close. Here's your football thing. We cut up a lot about it around here. But you know what? I don't have much for a running back or a quarterback that gets some award. And the first thing that comes out of his mouth, he better be thanking those big old bohemians that are in front of him. Those big old monster, all those linemen that are protecting his health every time he carries the football. Or opening a hole for him. And see, somebody that thinks they're something and you can step out of the team, they're all mixed up in the head. Because God loved us so much that He built a team around us. He looked at Adam and said, Adam needs a team. Okay, here comes Eve and on we go. The church is not just one. It's not, again, this I guess is the theme for this service, but it's not just up here, but it's all of us in totality together. We're the body of Christ. Many parts, Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we're many parts but one body. And all of those parts, some of them are, are seem more necessary than others. But God even said, look, the ones that seem less necessary, I put more value on those because those complete the body. On and on we could go with more analogies. It's a machine. You've ever seen all the parts of the machine when it's working well, it's just humming along? We're, not, we're, we're a machine, not a bunch of mavericks that are running our own way. God's the head. God's the leader showing us where we go. And we go from there. So that's the How? I remember many times telling this. There are a couple in our church, a couple of guys right now dealing with the call in their life. I've shared this so many times to folks through the days, but I share it today. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24 says, Faithful is he who calleth you who will also do it. How in the world, Brother Jay, will God ever bring it to pass? That's some of our worship today. That's some of where God was hanging out in my life today in worship. When you look at it and it seems so big and you think, God, how in the world? And I really want this and I want that, but God, how are you going to do it? And then the enemy's right there. You know, he's always there. He's always present. He's the prince of this world. You know? But yet I'm reminded that God shows us. I'm, how are you going to do it, Lord? I'm reminded of that verse. 
It says, faithful is he who calleth you who will also do it. Let me tell you something. If God called you to an altar of salvation today, it's him, it's he that saves you, not yourself. Amen? God calls us to something special, a special calling in our life, or he speaks to our heart about sharing Christ with someone. It's going to be God that accomplished it, not us. All he's ever needed is us, and then he can work to and through us. Faithful is he who calls us who will also do it. God gives talent levels to all, and we come together and make the body of Christ. And then the third one today, the third question, of course, is where? John Wesley, of course, one of our heroes in Wesleyan Arminianism, John Wesley said, the world is my parish. I hope today that God will begin to take the, take the blinders off and what you'll hear in the next five to seven minutes and us be reminded that, listen, we're not just right here, but it's anywhere we go. It's any conversation that we have. It's whether we're on social media or talking to somebody face to face. It's not less, it's more. It's not getting out of something, it's getting into it. Remember this, whether it's paying forward or serving or representing Christ, God's called us to the wear of this world. The world is my parish, John Wesley said. So this earth, anywhere we are, we're supposed to be salt and light. Anywhere that takes this, our life takes us, each opportunity that God affords us. I'll debate this over and over with folks again and again, but I'll tell you something. There's never more satisfaction than doing what you were created to do. You know what we were created to do? We were created to have a relationship with Almighty God. Sin messed it up. God went to great lengths to redeem us. We were created to be close to God and walk with Him. And because of our fallenness, God has changed us in Jesus Christ. He's redeemed us. And then with that change, God gives us a calling. The reason we're still here, the reason we're breathing is we're supposed to minister to others. We're supposed to represent Him well to others. And God commissioned every one of us. Some of the last words of Christ when He was here was a great commission. Where you and I are supposed to, what He does for us, we're supposed to impact other people. Matthew chapter number 5, verses 14 through 16 says this, You are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see what? Your good works, and give glory to your Father in heaven. I want to close today with one more question, if you will. One of those words that we hear so much, but why? Why? Well, the first answer that comes to mind is we're the bride of Christ. Why are we to talent go? Because we're part of the family. We're the bride of Christ. I, I want to share this before I walk down. I, I want to be able to look at you more than I can when I walk down. And I don't want to be too forthright, but a lot of the kids, most of the kids have gone out, and I don't want to be too risque here, but you ever, you ever stopped and thought about being the bride of Christ? That means, the bride of Christ means we have a level of intimacy with Christ that the world doesn't know about. Today when somebody takes a shot at you because of your belief system and you talk about your love for the Lord or your diligence with the Lord and somebody in the world takes a shot at you, just remember this, that they don't understand the intimacy that you have with Christ. They don't understand an altar like we could come and worship at today. They don't understand the worship that we've had today, the connection with God. The world does not understand that. They don't understand the preaching of the Word. It says the preaching to the lost is his foolishness. The world looks at what we're doing today as foolishness. And I love the old hymn that says, You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. The reason I know God's alive today and Jesus is alive is because I've experienced Him in a relationship. There's intimacy. Why? We're the bride of Christ. You and I today are His hands. We're His voice. We're His legs. We're His heart, His emotions. Mm. Another why is this, is if we don't, who will? Ever stop and thought about that? If you don't tell somebody about Christ in your life, who will? Well, the preacher will. What if they don't watch YouTube? What if they don't go to church? Think about it. Who's going to tell them the good news if the ones with the good news <laughs> are not telling them? Somebody defined Christianity this way. It's, it's a beggar who's found bread that's trying to tell other people where to find the bread. Who will? You stop and thought about that? See, sometimes we departmentalize it. But we're the bride of Christ. Huh? Remember, it just jumped in my mind. You ever seen newlyweds? 
I mean, it's almost sickening. Y'all with me? It's sickening. They all over each other, up underneath each other's armpits, and it's like they become one literally. I mean, they're all about it. You know, we walk by us that have been married forever. Excuse me, honey. And we go, huh, let's see how much they're doing that in 10 years from now. Well, 10 years now, they're not hugging because they got them youngins that are all over their head. But you can always tell those newlyweds. You know what my pastor used to say? He said, one of the problems with a child of God is they get over being saved. Hmm. That warm, fuzzy feeling is not warm, fuzzy anymore. Hmm. You know what's good about worship, Blake? That we get to have a, a warm and fuzzy. That's what it's been for me today. It's been a long time before I forget this altar experience today. That, 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 that empowered me. It filled me up, filled my cup up so I can spill out on others. That's what church is. Church is, I get, my, I get my cup filled so I can spill out on others. So I can come back. Maybe it's my devotion time, my prayer time, so God can fill me up again so I can spill out on others. Doug Carter said it. He said a lot of Christians are like half-filled cups trying to overflow. It's hard to spill out on other folks if your cup is dry. Let me end this way. You know, I had him put it up there, but you know what we need to be reminded one more time? It's, it's talent go, not talent show. I want to end with the gong show. Is that okay? I told Bo, it was so late I came up with this idea. I, I would have loved to have a gong today, but that had been so bad. Somebody singing, I'd have pointed at him and gonged him, you know. Terrible singing. But you know what I think about? Today, and I know you think literally because you're watching me, and, but today I'm on God's stage. God put a calling on my life at 14. So today, I've been on this calling stage for the last few minutes. I woke up about 3 o'clock in the morning, this thought. i got to say it's of God. You know, I don't know much happens at 3 o'clock in the morning. But this thought that I'm on God's stage. Am I going to make it? Or am I going to get gonged off the stage? So a lot of people say, well, it doesn't matter, Jay. You're saved and God's taking care of that. But wait a second. Why am I here? Aren't, aren't I supposed to leave? Am I supposed to leave you with Jesus? But if I'm bringing reproach to Him when I'm on the stage... Think about it. Some say, well, that's just the preacher. Let me tell you something. Mom and dad, you're on a stage. And the kids are sitting over at the table. And they're watching you perform. God's watching. We say, oh, preacher, it's not, it's very important. Vitally important. Because it's not talent show. If all, if, if, if all people are seeing is what Jay's doing and they're not seeing God, God forbid, but I hope God never says, well, here's a thought. Let's get him off the stage and get someone else on the stage. Tomorrow when you get up to work, go to work all day long. You're going to be on the stage. When that adversity comes up, you got to deal with that person you always have to deal with. You know him, you can name him right now. God wants you to know you're on his stage. Boom. See, I think we've gotten too good, even in theology, at saying, well, it doesn't matter. Oh, I think it does. Everything about me, listen, I believe this is everything about me. And I'm not just talking about me preaching today, but it applies too. As I believe in our life, we're either drawing people to him or we're pushing them away. See, today in talent, it's not much if it's about Jay. It's talent go, not talent show. Do I think it's coincidental in our world that we'll have two more reality talent shows that'll come out in the next year or two? No. Because there's something within the fallen part of man is we want everybody to see us 
you know what we're called to do? We're called for everybody, even when they see our talent, they see our abilities, they see us. It's our responsibility for people to see Christ. Let me end here. <laughs> some time ago, I don't even know what it was. I don't even know how I got there. But it was something about some kind of a, oh, I know where, it just came to mind. I don't know where it is now. It's like these you can go on websites or whatever, and you can, you can look up Lakeshore Church. And, and then I got to one of these where people could give their opinions. And so I'm reading along. You know, there's four or five opinions. One of the opinions, that's what it says. It said, uh, I love the church. I love the, preach, the preaching. But he was a little arrogant. So I read it, I went, man, I I'd like to tell you a lie. And so I went back and checked to see if Bo or Glenn was preaching that Sunday. But he didn't give a date. But I remember how it hit me. I went, man, I've been called a lot of stuff. I ain't never, never, ain't never, okay? I ain't never thought arrogant. But here's the thought. Listen to me. If it's talent go and not talent show, let the world say whatever they want to say. Hmm? I don't have to defend me. Listen to me. I don't have to defend me. My husband's going to defend me. You with me? I am a heterosexual, by the way. But I'm part of the bride of Christ. Jesus will defend me. Amen? And so we need to be reminded, my responsibility, my responsibility is to be salt and light. My responsibility is to die to self. My responsibility is to be in tune with God. It's talent go. I read five. There's five of these now about serving. Five of these that talks about my abilities. The reason God's given me the abilities He has, and you too, is for us to serve other people with them. And that's where we came up with that thought. It's about talent go, not talent show. God help us. And I start with Blake because he's over there, and Daniel, and all the ones up on the stage, and the choir, and everybody else, myself, and anybody else that ever breathes a word, whether it's a salt and light group. God help us if it's talent show. It's not about talent show. It's about talent go. Because we want to show Christ to other people. And it starts in the heart. Okay? I'm going to pray over us today. If you'd like to use the altar, fine, but I'm through. We've done a lot today. Okay? Blake's going to play. And uh, this is what I want to pray over you. I want to pray God stir us. We have some amazingly talented people in our church. But I want to remind you, any talent that you have, God gave it to you. So God puts it in us. He expects us to work at it. Amen? He gave us the Word, but He expects us to get in the Word. Talent. Okay? So it's not talent show. You messed up if you think Lakeshore's ever going to put on a talent show for you. Because what we're supposed to do with our talent is about talent go. It's about God filling us up when we come here so that you and I can go spell out on other folks. We pr let's pray. We thank you, Lord. I give you praise, I give you glory, I give you honor.